Speaking of the event, Esther Wangombe, Deputy Director, Renewable Energy, Ministry of Energy, said the country has put in place proper regulatory frameworks to govern renewable energy. Energy policy, and we do have the Energy Act, and when it comes to issues of renewable energy, we do also work with the forestry sector. So we also have the, we also have, have the Forest Act of 2016, and they also have a policy. And together, we work uh, towards one goal of promoting uh, biomass uh, energy in the country. She further went to state that unlike the belief that renewable energy has little to no opportunities, the situation on the ground is a total contrast. Well, one, out there, there's so much that, that, uh, that is yet to be done to make wood biomass uh, development sustainable in a country. For example, when it comes to uh, charcoal production, uh, we need people to go, to go out there and plant wood rots, purposely for charcoal production, purposely for firewood production, not for, not for timber, but for purposely for biomass energy production. Uh, number two, you cannot ignore those 69% of Kenyans who use that kind of energy. So we need to go out there, help them. Uh, also, we need people to, uh, uh, to start tree nurseries, commercial tree nurseries, purposely to grow trees geared towards uh, wood fuel production. However, renewable energy is equally not short of challenges, key among them being societal stereotype. And people don't give priority to that kind of business, like planting trees for wood fuel production. People uh, tend to, see, they, to think that they take too long to grow. For you to plant, uh, wait for it for some uh, several years, for you to be able to harvest and uh, sell and get money, that gestation period is too, too, too long for some people. Others, they prefer growing horticulture or other, other crops that earn them quick money. Then, the other challenge is uh, the issue of uh, marketing of some of these products. There are so many uh, requirements that people say, no, I, let, me, let, me know, let me go to another business. Let me grow trees for timber, not for charcoal and firewood production. Then the other one is the social culture barriers. Some people don't want to plant some trees because they believe you plant some trees like croton, uh, megarocapas. Some communities don't plant because they say you plant, it's a bad omen. Others believe that uh, trees are there, but they are planted by God. Why should I plant? I can cut, burn my charcoal, and wait for another one to, uh, to regenerate. My grandmother may not understand really what... Jenny Liu, SPRU, University of Sussex, UK, said for low carbon pathways to be achieved, developing countries must align themselves to global pathways. Um, at the global level, we have these ideals of where we want to reach in terms of 1.5 degrees, and there's a consensus at the global level that we need to reach this. But things look very differently at the local level, even in a country like Kenya. You have the federal government, which has its own uh, energy policies, but how those policies are enacted at the county level and then going even more into the community level. What are the problems, um, the priorities of community members? Is it a social issue or is it an economic issue? And we need to link those social economic linked issues to climate change and not think that climate change will actually drive forward action because mitigation action is something that is more long term. And what drives you and me to behave in a certain way is actually quite short term. So if I want to reduce the impacts of climate change, does that mean um, want to improve energy efficiency? That would be a benefit to me. I could uh, save on costs of electricity um, and then as a result also improve climate uh, mitigation actions. With climate change rearing its ugly head every single passing day, stakeholders must strive to adapt and adhere to low carbon pathways. <laughs> 